Oh look, they're eating with their hands. Oh my god, that's a very bad thing. They're eating off metal plates. Oh my god, that's a very bad thing. For these children, stupid foreigner, no, it's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> it's how we eat food. Because what these fellows would do afterwards is go and take their plates and just rinse them, take them to the kitchen. Whereas in the UK there's a big industry about plates, cutlery, washing up that land, right? And these fellows flick water at their friend and then take them back to the kitchen. So again, what's going on? There's a difference between this is the most crucial difference. Oh gosh, that's on five minutes. Okay. Let's come back to this point about what's going on. What's going on in this picture? There's different ways of talking about this. You could say there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven children in the front row wearing different colored shirts sitting on the floor. They have metal trays on their laps with what looks like some food or some play material. That's one way of describing the picture. There are some boys who look happy having their lunch. Is another way of describing the picture. Another way, there are some obviously poverty stricken children eating food off trays on dirty floors. Okay. How you describe it implies how you respond to it. If it's, oh no, children eating on the floor for dirty food. Ah! Right? The solution is get these fellows sat on chairs, with tables, with knives and forks, which are clean. Solution. Okay? If you they might look at this. This is mostly carbohydrates. We wonder about the protein content. Perhaps we might need to introduce some micronutrients. Okay? So what I'm trying to say is how we describe something implies how we respond to it. If we, if we see this as just children having lunch, there's no need for any response. If we see this as children with slightly deficient diets, we respond to it another way. If we see this as children eating their lunch off dirty floors, we respond to it another way. Alright? For these children, if we ask them, they could say, well, madam, there's no problem at all. Well, uncle, there's no problem at all. Except he's got bad breath. He needs to brush his teeth. And I'm not speaking to him anyway. <laughs> okay? So remember that, that as we look and describe, who we describe and look at also have their own views. In the UK now, this has become increasingly important about not just us as academics, as can-do people, mm, defining other people's realities, but saying to them, okay fellows, how is it with you today? Negotiating reality. Because if these fellows see there's no problem, you could say there's nothing for us to be done. There's nothing to be done. Right? Because this is these two things are really, really important. Why do we think that there's a problem? And who's that problem for? Right. I'll finish off on this slide, if that's all right. Because when I'm at home, just like here, and that's getting hot in here, we get a bit tired. I don't mind if people shout out or a bit noisy, talk to their friends, I don't care. Right? Really so much. Because we're friends. Okay? And there's an acceptable level of because when I'm sitting when I when I sit in that chair, I get bored too. So it's okay. Where some of my colleagues would, sh would shout, put your phone away, don't be stupid, silly, idiot. Right? So for me, a little noise, 
A little talking is no problem. But for other people, it's a major problem. Right? So it's like what I would consider just to be normal, everyday, fast from noise, for other, for other teachers, is like a major discipline problem. So I don't see any problem to address. They do. So they try to make people behave, whereas I'm just thinking, you're behaving. It's okay. All right? And in some ways, the most important thing that I'd like to say to some of my colleagues about that is about where do you think this happens? When does it happen? How does it happen? And why does it happen? One time, two colleagues came to find me. They came into my room like this. What's going on in your first year class? What? Why are they so rude? Why are they so noisy? And what I wanted to say was, well, they're not rude and noisy to me, <laughs> but that says something about my colleagues, no? <laughs> so I had to start asking these types of questions. So where? Where? When? How? Who's being it? And we found out eventually there was about just two or three students who were annoying them. But when they came into my room, it's the whole class which is a problem. But it was two or three students who sometimes annoyed them, brackets annoyed them when the teachers were being boring, close brackets, <laughs> right, that were the problem. Because when you're here, you expect that people think that what you've got to say is really interesting. When we teach, sometimes we forget that we are so boring that you want to kill yourself. Because there have been many times when I've been sat in those chairs there and I wanted to stab an archery with the pencil <laughs> because I can't cope anymore. <laughs> or to just drive it into my brain because I'm tired of living in the border. Okay? So the most important thing about this morning, friends, if I can begin to finish off now, is that you're all intelligent, articulate and ambitious people. Right. One of the most important lessons for you to learn is to see the world from very different viewpoints. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. How to step out of your own shoes and see the world from someone else. Because you're used to seeing the world, big picture. But if I'm on the factory floor, this is all I see. If I'm your cousin, brother, this is all I see. If you want to convince me to do something, you need to help me to see the world through your eyes. But that means that you have to be able to see the world through mine. Otherwise, we can't talk. A simple example. In India, do you have the same problem with boys' language and girls' language? Men's language and women's language? Allow me to explain. In the UK, Women have a special language designed to confuse men. <laughs> it goes like this. What are you feeling? <laughs> Where is this relationship going? <laughs> Do you want to go to the next level? <laughs> Is this Tekka? <laughs> Is this Grand Theft Auto? What are you talking about? <laughs> and he's like, you, I mean, the women in the room would just say, yes, I've seen that look on boys' faces. It's like that complete look of terror. It's like, she's talking that language again. <laughs> what do I have to say? What do I have to say? What do I have to say? Um, yes, I'm really trying to be in touch with my feelings. <laughs> you know, see the women are laughing because, see, this is the women's equivalent of torture. <laughs> if they get into a board in a relationship, it's like, oh, I've got nothing to do, I've got no friends to talk to. I don't know, let me just go do some psychological warfare on the boy. <laughs> Watch him crumble. <laughs> so, hello, sweetie. Which are the relationships going then? Oh, my God! <laughs> 
to come out here and give or something. <laughs> right? Now, as far as I understand it, there are two different ways of talking about things. And the girls can't understand boys' talk either. <laughs> because, where were you? Are you asking me about what this is for? I was with my friends. Oh, so you prefer to spend time with your friends and what time with me? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> if you keep talking like that, you'll spend a lot more time with them. <laughs> but people who are intimate, who understand each other, profound differences of world view. Because you've seen that, not that you have boyfriends or girlfriends now, because you're very serious students. <laughs> but you've seen that look from people's faces, like, what the hell are you talking about? Right? This is from someone you know and have feelings for, and they are so damn stupid. And the point is, is that you need to just hold on to that, even someone who cares for you, and you like and sees the world some of the same way as you can see the world and situations entirely differently. Now for boys it's a real head twist to understand girls' language. Is that how to ask a friend? When she says this, what does it mean? She said, my friend said, it, it means you're a fool. That's what it means. One time, I said to my, elder, my younger daughter, this woman just said this to me, what does it mean? And my daughter looked at me, and then she, she looked at me, the kind of look that says, are you really my dad? <laughs> are you really so stupid? So I said to her, I don't understand what it means. But for her, the meaning was so obvious that she said to me, Dad, there are only three possible explanations for your lack of understanding. You're stupid, <laughs> Stubborn or selfish? Or all three? Which one? How many? Because for her, the truth was self evident. It's like, what's two and two? For her, it was that obvious. For me, I had no idea what was going on. So, what I'm trying to say is that. We need to bear in mind that even people we have feelings for who are close to us do not see the world in the same way. So how much less people we work with or work for us? And how much more time do we need to give to, okay, let's actually see, take a little time to talk things through and to see things from each other's point of view. Does that make sense? Yes. Just, just, that's the only message from this morning. Take time to talk. Because if we don't talk, we'll just keep the mindsets we have and nothing changes. Yeah? As in our relationships, as in work, as in our studies. If we don't take time